Hi, it's Priam here from Niche Advice. In these videos, I'm just going to touch on some of the key questions that I get under the videos. So, one of the questions, uh, well, there's a number of questions, and they all sort of, uh, they're all around the same subject, which is to do with benefits. Um, now, that could be child benefit, and then moving on to universal credits and child, uh, you know, housing benefit, and so forth. So, let's talk about benefits and using benefits as part of your income for afford affordability. Um, the rules are there are some good lenders and bad lenders in terms of benefit income. There are some a lot of lenders that do not take any part of benefit income. So they will not take it. Not even child benefit. They won't take it. Okay. So the more mainstreamy lenders, they will have, uh, or high street lenders, they have got rules and they take an element of child benefit. Often they see it as a secondary income or, or universal credit or wh whatever this disability, are, whatever it is on the benefit front, um, they will take 50 or 60% of that benefit. There are some lenders, however, that will take 100% of that benefit. So as long as you can demonstrate that benefit has been there for, certainly for the last six months to a year, then those lenders will take 100% of the benefit income. Now, there it gets a bit messy when you're dealing with universal credit because universal credit um, is uh, essentially they could take an element of it. So the child element, for example, for universal credit, they could take into account. You've also got to take into account a lot of the lenders do not like to take income from benefit if your child is over the age of 11. So if the children are younger, that's okay, they will take it. But if they're over the age of 11, they usually, well, some will discount the, the benefit part. So it's not straightforward. It depends on what you're, what you're getting, how often you've been getting it. Um, is that sustainable going forward? Because there are some people that have been getting some benefit and now all of a sudden they've gone to employment and their employment has given them more and that hasn't been recalculated yet. So it can get a little bit messy, but you know, if you're going to take something away, take away that there are some lenders that will take 100% of benefit income uh, on certain circumstances, a lot more lenders doing 50, 60%, but it can be taken as part of uh, the the overall income. What I will say is, you know, I sometimes get inquiries to say, I'm on benefits, can you get me a mortgage? Well, um, I'm not aware, uh, and I don't think it's probably a good idea to get somebody a mortgage if they're 100% on benefits. So I'm not aware of many lenders doing those. Um, so, you know, it will be an overall part of your mortgage. Often, sometimes what happens is they will say no more than 50% of your income can be benefit. Or the benefit income cannot be more than your actual income. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.